everyone, welcome back to Liz's Bookcase. Today I'm coming to you for my um, introduction to my kitchen, the tools that I'm going to be using for this challenge. Um, on this episode, we're going to take a little tour. Um, at the end of this episode, stay tuned because we're doing our first January uh, cookbook reveal. So that's going to be very exciting. Um, and so let's get started. So the first thing I have over here is an immersion blender. Um, I find it really useful for making tomato bisque or things like that, things that I want to puree. Um, if I'm hiding veggies from the kids, things like that. Um, so then next I have your basic measuring tools. We have, I like the Pyrex um, sizes here and um, you have your teaspoon. Things. I also have behind me a scale. Um, you're going to be using this for if you're doing a lot of baking because things need to be a lot more precise when you're measuring for baking. Um, then I have one of my most expensive things in my kitchen. Um, I invested in this a while ago and um, have loved it and they've held up really well. Um, it's the all clad pans. Um, I have the lasagna pan, I have the omelet pan, a saute pan, a frying pan. Um, two so sizes of per saucepans and a stock pan. So um, something along those lines I would definitely consider getting. Um, it's just to go ahead and have that on hand and you really want to look into the thickness of those. Um, I'll try to find you some information or maybe a good video that I can link um, that can kind of go into how to pick out your pans. Um, then we have here our Pyrex dishes. These are just great for baking casseroles or um, different things you'll find a lot of uses for these in your kitchen and then of course the pie pan because we all like to have a homemade uh, pie so then we have our um, back here we have our um, food processor and this is going to be really good for making sauces is one of my favorite things to do in it I'm hoping that uh, doing this cookbook challenge is going to give me a lot um, of other new things to use it for but it's a pretty inexpensive thing that makes uh, the process of cooking pretty quick and it washes great in the dishwasher so um, this is our flour sifter flour sifter I don't use that as much as I would like to it's mainly for baking but I'm hoping to get into that more. Of course we have here a strainer. You definitely need one of those. I have two. I have a little bit bigger one um, but just to show you. Um, I use these funnels a lot for things if I'm you know putting soups away or um, I don't know. I found a lot of things. Sometimes I transfer things from my jars, my olive oils or things like that. Um, I, I just really think it's a good thing to have in your kitchen. The stackable bowls are the thing that I have next here. Um, you have to have these. <laughs> I, I say go buy 10. Um, it, you use them for everything, especially if you're going to do any sort of prepping um, for your food to make your process go along quicker if you're making a recipe or something like that. Um, next we have our knives. Now this is probably my second most expensive thing in the kitchen. I bought these a while ago. Um, and so I have the chef's knife. Um, the boning knife, a bread knife, a tomato knife, a paring knife, and um, what they just call a utility knife. Um, and I wanted to mention to you that if you're just getting started, the other thing that I would say really look into, and I'll see if maybe I can try to find a video to link below, um, is learning your knife skills. It really makes the cooking process go a lot smoother and a lot less stressful if you can just have some basic knife, knife skills and understand um, the tools better. So as you're doing that, you might want to invest in a cut glove. Um, you can order these online and um, make sure you don't chop your uh, fingers off. Um, these are also really great if you're trying to shuck oysters or things like that. Just a really good thing to have on hand. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with these. I have a lot of them, um, all kind of different ladles and um, spoons and different things. You really do need to have a good variety of these on hand. Um, tongs are one of the biggest things that you'll use a lot, turning meats or different kind of things like that. You just, you just need to have a good variety of this stuff. It's worth the investment. So um, the next are all kind of the little tools that I have in my kitchen. Um, one is a thermometer, meat thermometer. This is really handy um, and something I highly recommend in most cookbooks, if they're good, will tell you it should come to this temperature. 
and then you'll know that it's done. So that is definitely a necessity. We have, um, obviously, most of you probably already have these type of things, can openers and ice cream scoops, and we cannot forget our wine opener. And um, if you're gonna be doing any grilling, it's good to have um, a lighter on hand. Um, ice cream scoop like this is used really often in things um, when you're doing muffins or cupcakes it's kind of one of those tricks that people use to keep it keep it on the inside and then if you're serving sherbet or anything like that it's just really nice to have um, you definitely need a juicer you're gonna find a lot of recipes that are just gonna say call for a little lemon juice or something like that and squeezing it into your hand and trying not to get the seeds in the whole dish is just it's just better to have even something that is just inexpensive like this on hand. Um, one of my favorite things in the kitchen is this um, tuna strainer because I love a good tuna fish sandwich. So um, I have that. Um, I also just have some kitchen twine. You'll find this a lot if you're doing um, a lot of different meats call for this. So it's just a good thing to keep on hand. Um, I also have baking cups. These are they're just one of those things that you should probably have and toothpicks. Um, you'll need these for putting meats together or something if you're going to stuff them. Um, but sometimes we just find like we don't have these things on hand. This is a little tiny strainer. And this is also another really good tool if you're trying to get a lemon juice situation without getting the seeds or you'll end up finding a lot of good uses for that. Um, some serving spoons obviously are a good thing to have. I also wanted to mention um, to go ahead and invest, if you are going to do some grilling, make sure and get a nice, long, um, heavy-duty um, piece for that. And just have it on hand because all these little things really make every little part of the process of cooking go much smoother. Um, I put these up here just to remind me, but you want to have some good storage um, food containers, all different sizes. I love these Pyrex glass ones because they can go in the microwave or... Um, in the oven, um, they're really good and they, they're heavy to just stand the test of time. So um, then we have, uh, this is um, cheesecloth and you're going to use this for um, lots of different recipes, especially uh, if you're trying to, you know, get flavor into your food, but you'll end up wrapping herbs in this, but you don't want the actual herbs or something like that in it. Um, then we have a cheese grater um, and two, a couple different sizes of cutting boards. It's also a really good idea to have like a meat cutting board and a vegetable cut fruit, fruit and vegetable cutting board. Um, underneath this, I have a um, pizza stone. I want to mention that because I'm going to try to do some um, bread baking. I'm hoping with some of the recipes and to cook it on this really gives it that more like authentic nice crispy bottom. Um, it's also wonderful to have at home to make pizzas with your kids. Um, and then if you're going to be doing that, some, a little tool like this is also very, very useful. Um, so, almost done. We have the <laughs> aluminum foil. I just wanted to bring this up. It's just one of those things you have to have. I'm sure you all do plastic wrap and, you know, something good to be able to get stuff in and out of the oven. Um, I just kind of went through my drawers and cabinets and pulled out everything that I know that I use really often. Um, so below my cookbook that we're going to re reveal soon, um, I have my cast iron pan, which I'm finding that I use more and more and more every day. It just makes food taste better, I think. And then I have my two sheet pans here who have <laughs> seen, seen a lot of time. So um, maybe I'll do a I've been reading about a way to clean those, so maybe I'll do some sort of a video on that. Um, but let's get to it. Let's do our reveal and find out what cookbook that we're going to be um, using this month to inspire all of us. Um, I'm very excited, so I want to open it for you. Normally, I will be doing this in front of my beautiful book face, but today is a little different, so um, I can tell what this is. So it is Felidia, yay! <laughs> so this is, uh, well, no, I'm gonna try not to butcher her name, but Lydia uh, Bas mm, Bastianich, Bastianich, Lydia Bastianich, okay? And uh, Felidia is her um, 
restaurant in New York. So these are recipes from her restaurant in New York and um, I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's so funny that I said that I've been a spaghetti funk and now we're going to do, this is real spaghetti. So um, this is going to be very exciting. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you again January 5th. I will go ahead and start getting on these recipes and um, keep tuning in because you have the chance to win this book. I will send it to you. Okay, thanks so much everybody.